Hallelujah. Ephesians 5, chapter 15, the text says it like this. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise. Make it the most of the time, because the days are evil. My brothers and sisters, I want to start a brand new series today, and I want to talk from this subject, we versus me. My brothers and sisters, as we approach and have pretty much amalgamated ourselves into 2022, we come with, an, with a collective ecclesial goal. Ecclesial mean church. As a faith community to build a bona fide, get this now, 21st century relevant team. We come with a collective goal as a faith community to build a bona fide 21st century relevant team. For those who follow my preaching, perhaps have ascertained that my conviction homiletically, which means preaching, my conviction homiletically is geared toward sharpening one's individuality. And to that end, it may appear that in this series that I'm deviating from my homiletic conviction of sharpening one's individuality, but I would argue quite on the contrary because I contend that shared individuality is the sauce that flavors a bona fide team. I'm going to say that again. That share, thank you, Dr. Collins, Dr. Johnson, Kevin for Gloria, we versus me. That shared individuality is the sauce that flavors a bona fide team. And so, my brothers and sisters, centered around our journey to build this bona fide team, I invite you to embrace the following equation. And that is time plus effort plus adapting equals momentum. Help me out with that in the comment section, that equation. Time plus effort plus adapt equals momentum. Time plus effort plus adapt equals momentum. Time plus effort, plus adapt, equals momentum. And so my brothers and sisters, with that equation in mind, I invite you just for a few moments to indulge me as we start this discussion from the end game, from where we're trying to go. And then we'll work our way backwards so that we may, my brothers and sisters, have some kind of synchronization. That my brothers and sisters, the end game is momentum. For that is ultimately what we seek out this year. Momentum, momentum. And for the sake of harmony, my brothers and sisters, as a working definition for momentum, I invite you to look at momentum as, as live and contagious energy. I'm going to say that again. Thank you, Kat, for putting that in the comment section. Time plus effort plus adapting momentum. Momentum, live, and thank you, Tequila, contagious energy. Live and contagious energy. And so, my brothers and sisters, as a ministry, the new church, as a faith community, the new church, and my brothers and sisters, thank you, Gloria, thank you, thank you, Greg, for putting that in there. Thank you, uh, Eric, thank you, Donetta. As a new church, as a ministry, as a faith community, my brothers and sisters, but not only as a faith community, even in our personal lives, here it is, get this now, we want to find and live in momentum. I'm going to say that again. As a ministry, yes, but also even in our personal lives, we want to find and live in momentum. I'm going to say it again for those who didn't get it because you were asleep. 
even in our personal lives alongside our ministry, we want to find and live in momentum, that live and contagious energy, that live and contagious energy, get this now, of momentum, here it is, is where unexplainable and incomprehensible abundance of favor flows. I'm going to say that again, that live and contagious industry, also known as momentum, is where unexplainable and incomprehensible abundance and favor flows. It is from momentum that we gather the abundance. It is from momentum that we are able to see tangible and my brothers and sisters osmotic favor over our life. And my brothers and sisters, sometimes the abundance abundance and favor that falls our way as a result of momentum is often unexplainable. It's often incomprehensible. And let me stop right there and prophetically declare that some stuff that's about to happen to you in this year, the favor and the abundance that's about to fall over your life that's generated because you was intentional about creating some momentum. My brothers and sisters is going to be unexplainable and incomprehensible. There's going to be some things that God allows to put th for you to have in your hand that you cannot explain. There is no degree that's going to help you get it. There's no amount of study that's going to help you get it. It's just going to be some stuff that God put into your space, into your life, where you're going to be able to say that could nobody do this but Jesus. Could nobody do this but Yahweh. Could nobody do this but Yahshua, Jesus. Could nobody do this but Elohim. Can nobody do this but the God we serve? I wish I had a couple of people in the comment section who can say, I'm ready for my favor. Come on, type it in the comment section. I'm ready for my favor. You've been down too long. You've been broken too long. You've been depressed too long. You've been in a state, my brothers and sisters, of stagnation too long. You have not, my brothers and sisters, realized all that you can realize, experience all that you can experience, become all that you can become. Why? Because, my brothers and sisters, God was just testing you to wait to see could you get to this day of January the 16th, 2022 so that you can start generating some momentum. My brothers and sisters, that my brothers and sisters, it cannot be explained. It cannot be articulated. It cannot be comprehended. It's just because God been good to you. Let's go back to my favorite scripture. Eyes have not seen ears have not heard. I'm going to say that all the time. Neither has it entered into the heart of man or woman what God is about to do concerning their people. That's right Dr. Reagan Johnson. That's right Dr. Uh, that's right Dr. Grayland. That's right Greg. That's right Deacon Kevin Adams. That's right Donna. That's right Eric. I'm ready for my favor. Is there anybody in the house today? Wherever you are in your house, in your car wherever you are at the gym wherever you watching me just can take some time to open up your mouth and begin to declare the favor of God over your life. Open up your mouth and begin to declare the abundance of God over your life. Open up your mouth and begin to declare the favor and abundance of God over our ministry, over our church, over our sub team, over your pastor, over every contract that we have to sign, over every construction worker that we have to pay, every, over every dollar that we must have to meet the budget of this year. Every outreach initiative will be funded. I wish I had a couple people that can be with me and say, God, let me let us generate some momentum so we can do your work. Let us generate some momentum so we can become more like you. Somebody put in the comment section momentum. Momentum. That's right, Melissa. Ready for my favor. Momentum is coming my way. One of my favorite songs that we've been singing at the new church for years, it says, it's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing is flowing my way. It's the season of power and prosperity. It's a new season that's coming for me. Somebody, anybody, wherever you are, get crazy in your space and shout out favor. Favor, favor, that's right, to kill a momentum. That's right, Brandon. I'm, if it is so, I'm ready for my favor. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. And so, my brothers and sisters, 
Lest I get too excited. Oh my shata da bago shete de bo sa. Lest I get too hey shaka da bago shete de bo sa. Hey hey. Oh, I feel somebody. I feel somebody as you type and as you watch and as you look at. God said, I'm turning some things around. I'm shaking some things up. I'm shaking up the very fallow ground that's under your feet. I'm about to put some smooth pavement so that you can moonwalk and glide and slide into your next breakthrough. I wish I had a couple of people who can receive what God is saying, even in this unscripted moment that. He's doing it for you right now. Some of you are going to be shocked that by this time next week, the stuff that happened in your life, some of you are going to be shocked by this time next month, the stuff that has happened in your life. I wish I had a couple of people who understand that this is the season that God is doing things quick, fast, and a hurry for those who stay focused and dedicated unto the task of building momentum by having life and contagious energy. Stop complaining. Stop talking about what you don't have and start speaking what you're going to become. Stop talking about what is not and start speaking what will be. Stop talking about what you did in the past and start talking about your present and your future because I believe my brothers and sisters, like Paul said, all things work Oh, I'm a preach today. All things work together for the good of them. That's right, Nicole, who love the Lord. That's right, Dr. Collins. All things work together for them who love the Lord and are called according to God's purpose. Amen. Hallelujah. Favor. Favor and 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 so my contention is that momentum has to be an intentional journey. Mm, Abba shout out Abba. That's right, Dr. Johnson. I'm coming. That 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 I have to be intentional about generating whoo yeah i hope i can get through this boy i feel jesus that i have to be intentional about generating mo mo momentum and and if i'm going to be intentional I, I invite you my brothers and sisters to embrace three critical things and i believe that in summation it will give us a real and live shot of gaining momentum elder love god bless you it's time for the saints of god to be blessed I, I, I agree with a touch and agree it is time that for the saints of god elder love to be blessed because we have been on a back burner too long we've been serving too long giving too much fasting taking care of what we're supposed to do we we ain't been perfect, but we've been serving. We ain't been perfect, but we've been loving. We ain't been perfect, but we worship every now and then. And it is time for the church. Yeah, yeah, the church, the people of God to be blessed. And I, I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to engage three critical things that I'm going to be talking about by way of this We Versus Me series. And the first being something that is all so significant. Time. T-I-M-E. God bless you, Melissa. Somebody drop that in the comment section. Time. The word. The word time. The word. The word time. The word time. Um, uh, time for the sake of congruency. And as a working definition, let, 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 let's look at it from this angle. Continuous selfless expression. Get this now. For the common good of kingdom advancement. Mm. Who help me, Holy Ghost? Continuous. Anybody got me on a time clock? Take me off. Uh, yeah. Continuous selfless expression. Oh, by shout out, I say. Uh, continuous selfless expression for. Oh my God, I feel you now. Uh huh. Uh 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 uh. For the common good of kingdom advance. That's right, nephew. Brian, time. That's right, Marlene. Time. My brothers and sisters. Uh, continuous selfless expressions for the common good of 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 kingdom advancement. Uh uh. uh Let's examine the Ephesians writer word that we read um, earlier. Let's go back to it. Look what the Ephesian writer says. Uh, that's right, Dr. Collins. Uh, the Ephesian writer says that uh, be careful then how you live. Mm. Not as unwise people, verse 15 to 16, but as wise. Get this now. Making the most of the time. Oh, by shot out of say. Mm hmm. Yeah. Because the days are evil. Let me begin by giving us some 
um, some textual backdrop so that we can respect the content because we understand the context. This Ephesian writer, my brothers and sisters, has a specific thematic thrust as they pen and author the book of Ephesians. And that uh, thematic thrust was to exhort the faith community to align their focus toward a kingdom agenda. I'm going to say it again. They write this text, the book of Ephesians, the centrality of it, the thematic thrust of it, suggests that the writer was exhorting, was encouraging the faith community, this first century faith community, my brothers and sisters, to align, align, come together, align their focus towards a kingdom agenda. That if you are a believer, that if you are a blood brought child of God, one who has a relationship with God, that we would come together, not individually, but the collective would come together with our own individuality, that we merge our individuality and share in our individuality, get this way, and focus on a kingdom agenda. I received that, uh, Mama Johnson, God is about to do some amazing things for you. Amen. Ah, he here it is. The author writes, my brothers and sisters, and suggests these, these, this focus, that we ought to come together to, to have a kingdom agenda. And my brothers and sisters, I like that because it speaks to that which I'm trying to accomplish at the new church, that we would not just be a ministry for the sake of ministry. Let me tell you something, and I believe this. The world don't need another worship experience per se, but what the world need is a ministry, a faith community that is focused on kingdom. It's too many churches that are moving, but they're moving with a carnal mindset. They are thinking about things that does not advance the kingdom, things that does not re relate to the purpose, mission, and will of God, and that is to embody a group of people who are willing to submit, commit, be smothered and covered by the anointing power of the Holy Ghost, that they may be able to be filled in a way that they go out and bring more people in to the community so that they can do kingdom evangelism work. It is too many of us that operates out of carnality and it's not enough of us that operates out of kingdom. And I invite you my brothers and sisters that whatever you do, whatever your ambitions are, whatever you're trying to do with your business, whatever you're trying to do with your life, whatever you're trying to do in your relationships, whatever you're trying to do on your job, whatever promotion that you seek, don't forget to have a kingdom mindset because only what you do for Christ is going to last. You can get an abundance of other stuff, but if you're at Absent of kingdom, then my brothers and sisters, why are you here? God is calling us to a place to come back to God. Kingdom. Somebody type. Somebody type kingdom. Yes, sir, Brandon. I'm taking my time. Somebody type kingdom in the in the in the comment section, kingdom, 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 kingdom. We want to be kingdom focused. I, our whole initiative of building this team is not just solely to produce numerical value, but to produce numerical and congruency for the sake of advancing the mission of God, for the sake of advancing the mission of not only God, but our local church, my brothers and sisters, to foster a community of love while providing a pathway for discipleship and as individuals embrace their spiritual journey, that we may be focused on our aims, and that is to love God. That's right, kingdom, to uh, Sister Catherine, to love God and to connect with each other and to serve community. That's right, Sister Tammy and Sister Nicole. Kingdom, kingdom. That's right, Marlene. That's right, Eric Johnson. Carnality versus kingdom. And I want you, my brothers, to understand that there's this dualistic choice that we have. There's this dichotomy, but depending on what you choose and what you pick is going to ultimately, my brothers and sisters, suggest where you're going. Sometimes carnality is enticing because it produced such a rapid benefit, but what good is a rapid benefit if it's ultimately going to destroy you? Sometimes we chase that which is imminent instead of waiting, but the Bible says for those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength, shall mount up with wings as eagles, shall run and not be weary, shall walk and not faint. They, I say, wait on the Lord. God has you waiting because God is about to bless your wish list, and he cannot bless your wish list until he realized that you had patience. The text says, let patience have its perfect work on you that you may be complete and lack of nothing. Sometimes God has to mold you for what he's already created you to have. You ain't got it yet, but God knows that he's going to drop 
happen in your lap. And I believe this is the year that all the molding you went through in the past, even our church, all the hell we went through, all the struggle we went through in the past. God said, this is the year. This is the year. Anthony, stay focused. Do not waver. Anthony, stay. I hear God telling me every day, stay focused. I don't care who get tired of hearing your message. I don't care who get tired of hearing because it's going to take all of us to do his work. He said it's going to take all of us to do his work. We cannot be slacking. We cannot be slothful. We have spent too much time wasting time. And so if you're going to get tired of me, you might as well get tired. But at the end of this year, for those who roll on this train and roll like you want to roll, I believe that not only through your hands, God is going to bless the ministry, but through your hands, God is going to bless your life. Somebody, if you're rolling with me, type in the comment section, I'm rolling with you, Pastor. I'm, 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 I'm rolling with you. Kingdom. Kingdom, kingdom, kingdom. And so we, 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 that's right, Sister Leela, stay focused. Uh, uh, we, 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 we in this Ephesians text, 5, 5 and 16. Get me off that time clock. I know your meter going in your head. I'm going to preach today. Uh, uh, it says, be careful then how, how you live. Amen. Sister Tequila, thanks for rolling with me. Be, be careful, Hadjarel. Thank you, Sister Catherine. Uh, not as unwise people, but uh, as wise. Mm -hmm. uh, making the most of time. Thank you, Deacon Kevin, for rolling with me. Because the days, mm -hmm, the days are, the days are, are evil. Let's deconstruct. Let's deconstruct these verses. I want us to hone in as it pertains to time. God bless you, Brother Greg Frat. Thanks for rolling with me. Thank you, Brother Eric. I, I want us to focus on three critical things as we, as we kind of create some symmetry concerning time. And, and, and it's right out this, right out this, right out this verse. Thank you, Gloria, for, for rolling with me. Thank you, Marlene, for rolling with me. Uh, uh, I want us to first address the core. See, a lot of us spend so much time building from the outside in. And this is why we're so damaged and this is why we're so broken. And this is why, my brothers and sisters, our success is minimum and it continues to, oh, my, shout out what I say, it, it continues to stagnate because you've built wrongly. Mm -hmm. In order to be effective, something that has a chance of being perpetual, consistent, never ending, something that has the chance to really gain that, that, that true momentum. My, my brothers and sisters, you have to look at the core. You cannot build from the outside in. And in this thing called time, the reason why God showed me we haven't really embraced it and treated it in the way that we should is because we're looking at it externally and not giving enough credence to it internally. Because if we have an internal conviction about our time and how we give our time to God, then what's the inside will ultimately direct what goes on the outside. Ooh, I'm preaching better than y'all responded. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mama Johnson, for rolling with me. I, I, if we focus on what's on the inside, it'll start, mm, oh, shout out on the outside. It'll start helping us and redirecting us and making sure that we're handing our business on the outside. The reason why some of us are broken because you're doing too much on the outside and you have not got the inside together. And so this thing called time number one, we're going to talk about the core. The core, the core of this verse, it reads, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as unwise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. Here's the core. Here's the centrality of, ooh, I out of the Here's the centrality of this scripture. It's this. It's verse 16. Here's the core. Making the most of the time. When you read the scripture, it, it's surrounded by a lot of sauce. Amen, Sister So So MJ. Uh, 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 it's, it's surrounded by a lot of sauce, but at the core, it deals with the element of time. Making, mm, mm -hmm. y'all with me, making the most, mm -hmm, 
making the most out of your or making the most out of time. Here, here's the here, here, here's the central fire. I want you to get it. That that time consideration has to oh my God oh my shatta has to be in the core of who we are. Mm -hmm. The writer suggests to the faith community that at the core, if they're going to be kingdom minded and kingdom focused, then how they they operate in time must be of strong consideration. Mm. Ooh. The reason why I'm so excited because I've already preached it to myself a few times and now you're getting what I've already preached to myself. G get this now. Th this is getting ready to bless you. Uh, many people give the least time to God in their schedule but expect the most action from God in their situation. Boy, I'm about to run up out of this place. I'm going to say that again. Many, uh, many people, my brothers and sisters, they give the least of their time to God in their schedule. But they expect the most action from God in their situation. In other words, their schedule with God does not align with their desire from God. <laughs> oh, work, Pastor, work, 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 work. I, I said their schedule to God and with God. Oh, man, I'm preaching better than you responding. Uh, 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 it does not align with their desire from God. God bless you, Tanya. How they operate in time must be a strong consideration. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because if you really want to be a rock star in the spirit, then how about you align that which you want from God oh, and make it analogous, align up, my brothers and sisters, with how you deal in time with God. You, haven't even, you have not given God enough time to even have the audacity to have the desire of what you want. And so now we become... Spiritual pimps thinking that we can pimp God in the spirit because we have learned creative spiritual languages and think that we can name and claim and blab it and grab it and declare and decree like God is some fool and does not understand that you want something from a person that you don't spend any time with. You want something from a person that you don't even work for. And my brothers and sisters, the text says, and I'm using this, my brothers and sisters, in an isogenical perspective, the text says, my brothers and sisters, that one who does not work does not eat. Let's make it analogous. The one who does not work does not eat. How can you eat from the riches of God when you ain't working for God? Now, am I trying, my brothers and sisters, to, 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 to expose a retributive theology, which means God handles us in retribution that I do and I gain? No, because we have something for grace. But I believe that depth of where we're trying to go, that the depth of our desire must be laced with the depth of service, a depth of service, service God. And then I believe that God will start manifesting our situations, stop giving Giving the least of God in your schedule, but wanting the most of God in your situation. Can I ask you a question? Where is God? Where is God in your agenda? Just think about it. Ooh. That's right. That's right, Dr. Johnson. I'm going to press on. I don't care who like it. Uh, uh, uh. It's been 15 and a half days of this year. 24 hours per day, 12 hours on today, almost at noon in 53 minutes. And out of my brothers and sisters, those days, do the math, how much did God get of your, your schedule? Both internally and externally. Both in worship and working for God. Both in worship and being obedient to God. By joining forces with the church and do something that's simple as taking a pledge. Do something as simple as signing up for a sub team. Do something as simple as helping create a team. But not only that, my brothers and sisters, do something in your life to be get more uh, uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. Here, it, oh, here, 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 here's the problem. Here, here's the problem. Here's the problem. Here, here's the problem. It's been... 15 and a half days and hear the voice of God. 
and I'm no self-righteous preacher. Here it is. I am not pleased with how you started this year because what you want from me does not line up with what you willing to give me. Oh. Woo, somebody going to log off in a minute, Dr. Johns. They ain't going to like this. Nicole, I'm going to preach anyway. Glory, I'm coming with it. Uh, 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 uh. What, what you want from him? Get me off that time clock. I'm, I'm going long today. What you want from him, what you want from God in the spirit is not what you're willing to wrestle with in the spirit. And the text says in Ephesians, just another chapter, for we wrestle. Woo, sister cat, I'm about to run out of here. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And so we are in a spiritual fight, but we don't have the spirituality that it takes to win the fight because it starts with my time with and for God. Mm -hmm. here, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. Ooh, I'm finna say something here. That's right, down there. Here, here, here it is. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, when God elevates me, I'm talking about children of God now. I'm, I, I don't speak to. I'm not speaking. I'm not speaking to those who don't believe. I'm talking about you. The other thing. When God elevates me, the enemy is, is upset, and so what the enemy desire is to attack my elevation. But the enemy, because it is a osmotic force, a spiritual force, devils, demons, demonology, it attacked me in the spirit, while yet it seems like I'm successful in the natural. <laughs> but what happens is when my natural well runs dry, my spiritual well does not have enough anointing to kick in and cover that which I'm weak because I have not prepared myself to be in the presence of God to fight in the spirit what I want to become. And that's why God said to protect you from your crazy self. I ain't giving it to you because you ain't giving me nothing. Oh, my God. Oh, shut up. I see you. Okay. Y'all ain't going to like me today, but I'm still going to pastor because I'm going to help you with this time thing because God told me that let's get it right in 2022. Oh, the hymn that said, when I fall on my knees with my face to the rising sun. Oh, Lord, have mercy on me. It's no longer the season where you just going to start declaring what you going to become. God said, show me in your schedule how significant I am in your life. You schedule meetings. You schedule parties. You schedule all this other kind of stuff. But I'm absent in your schedule. But you want me to speak to your situation. Now, I'll give you grace. It ain't going to kill you. But you ain't going to be elevated this year if I don't fall in line with my my time my mm. okay 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 so 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 you do know that part of giving God your time is following for I'm talking about partners now if you're visiting with us and you got another church take this back to your church but if you ain't got another church join us today because it's time for you to stop playing too you need to come on this team uh yeah you've been watching me too long you ain't going nowhere amen I'm talking I was talking wait until the pandemic it ain't over we thought it was gonna be over go ahead and join this church today but anyway I digress uh 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 but do you know that part of giving God your time is submitting to the structure and vision of the church in which you are a partner and are a member of? Do you know God speaks to me as the pastor to challenge your heart? And I can't do it for you. I can't. I can only give you what thus said the Lord. But it's this season and this moment that I love you too much to let you suffer in a place of abysmal or suffer in a place that you do not progress because you continuously design stuff that does not match your schedule with God. Some people think it's manipulation. No, it's not manipulation. It's the way that we show God how much we appreciate God. The service that we give to God, the relationship that we build to God. And some of you all, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. God bless you, Raya. God bless you, Brand Brandon. I know what you're saying. God bless you, Tanya. God bless you, Eric. You said, I got stuff and I ain't giving God time. 
No, the only reason why you got it, because God has graced you. But do you know that many of us are only walking in less than 20 percent of what we can have in God if we advance in the spirit? Because what also happens when we give God our time, our spirituality is in height, is heightened and our discernment is escalated. That means we're able to see things before they come and see some of you all. You don't see it. My brothers and sisters, till you hit you. Now, one thing about a boxer, when you're in a boxing match, a lot of those punches hurt but it's the pot punch that you did not see is the one that's gonna knock you out and some of y'all say how if you watch a boxing match how did he get that hard, hit that hard and did not fall he got hit the hard and not fall because he saw the punch coming but it was the one that he did not see coming my brothers and sisters the one that took him out and a lot of you are saying I'm going through the travails of life and I'm still here that's because you see the punches but the enemy trying to get that punch that you don't see but who is gonna help you with that punch that you don't see that's your relationship with God to be able to discern the punches that are coming your way so that you could be prepared for the attack that is inevitable and perhaps imminent. Oh, somebody logging off now. They don't want to hear this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I'm going to keep preaching for those who stand on. Uh, 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 uh. So the core, the core, we see uh, uh, in a literary form, in a in a rhetorical form, the way that this verse is writing, that at the core of the scripture, right in betwixt and between uh, stanzas, uh, it deals with time. And we, 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 we parallel that with our life, that at the core of, of, of what we need to become, it, it must start uh, and be centered around the time of God. Uh, uh, some of you all are listening to me and you know I'm telling the truth and, and the Lord is dealing with you. But after you say, I'll do better. Let me let me take a sip. See here, I decree and declare that this word will not fall on deaf ears like it has been in the past. I decree and declare that somebody is going to embrace this and put God in their sketch. In fact, your schedule should be authored by God. But I decree and declare that your focus will zone in on your personal relationship with God and your work and service in the ministry. And watch how stuff just start falling in place for you. Yeah, yeah, thank you for hanging in there with me, Deacon. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, 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 time. Uh huh. Some people say that, that it is in this season. We don't need a word like this. We need a, a, a word of uplifting. This is a word of uplifting because if we get to God, then we'll be uplifted. Here's the problem with us. We don't want to be challenged anymore. Anything that comes as a child, especially by those who are articulating from a place of homiletic authority, preaching authority, we, we tend to tune it out. Don't be that person that after you hear this lesson that you still continue in the same dysfunctional spiritual behavior that you have been doing it. It ain't been working, child, son, daughter, woman, boy, girl. It has not been working. Text that person who just logged off and said, get your butt back on this broadcast. Here it is. We got to deal with the core. Get me off that time clock. I'm almost done. Secondly, when we deal with this thing called time, three parts. It's the core, but then being number two, it's, it's the caution. God bless you. Thank you, Donetta. You're going to do better. Amen. Uh, uh, that's right, Dr. Reagan Johnson. Yeah, do, do, do better. Uh, the caution. We have the core. Here, here's the caution. Here's the caution for those who are still with me. Uh -huh. The caution in Ephesians 5, verse 15. Here, here's the core. Uh, make the most of the time. Here, here's the caution. Now, now, here's how he sandwiched the meat. The meat is the time. But here's the bread. Oh, I feel you, God. Uh, Ephesians, uh, Ephesians 5 and 15 says, Be careful then how you live. Not as unwise people. Mm -hmm. That's right, glory. Challenge me, God. But as as wise. Be careful how you live. Not as unwise people. I, I, I'm doing it slow because I want you to hear it. Uh, uh, but as wise. Th th that's right. 
That's right. So, so MJ, it ain't, it ain't been working. It ain't, it, 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 it hasn't, it hasn't. Uh, be careful then how you live. Let the word speak to you autobiographically how you live. We're we going to build a contextual bridge from the time of the text past to the time of now. But just, just, just let the word be careful how you live. It's a feature five, five, 15 to 16. You want to read it? Uh, uh, New Revised Standard Version, that is. Uh, uh, not as unwise people, but as wise. Be careful how you live. Here's the caution. Be careful. That is a, a alarming word. That's a word that, that invites caution. Be careful how you live. Not as mm, unwise people, but as wise. Okay, let me get to the point. Here the writer cautions the faith community, get this now, to use wisdom with whom and what they give their time to in their lives. Be careful how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Bridging the faith community. In other words, don't spend time with people who will manipulate you and extract timeless possibilities from you because the one thing you cannot get back beloved is time i don't care how much you try you can't get back time once it's gone it's gone that's why we have to deal with it as it comes that's why sometimes we say what we're gonna do and when we don't do it our lives become cluttered why because we did not handle the time and that's an unwise choice get this now Get this now. Some of our greatest defeats comes at unwise decisions on how we dispersed our time. I'm going to say it again. Some of our greatest defeats comes at unwise decisions of how we've dispersed our time. Some of our greatest defeats comes at unwise decisions of how we dispersed our time. And so a lot of you have been defeated because you've made unwise choices concerning the disbursement of your time. Mm -hmm. Every inch this year that you decide to commit and submit to has to be calculated. This ain't the year just to be doing stuff to just be doing it. This ain't the year just to be saying yes to stuff because between your God, your ministry, and your occupation, and for those who are in school, your time is limited. So when you start squeezing other stuff into your schedule, Guess who gets bumped out? God. And that's an unwise choice. And it's ultimately going to end up in defeat. Any, oh, any life that's absent of God is headed for damnation. This ain't a word that people like to preach anymore. We've gotten away from that. We've gotten away from that because we're too pie in the sky. We're too jolly, rolly, send jolly. But my brothers and sisters, God is trying to get us to be bold and holy, boldly and holy. And my brothers and sisters, if we do not, my brothers and sisters, formulate a mindset that time is too precious and that everything I give my time to has a concept. Oh my. Man. 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 Well, I'm about to run. I I'm looking, if you see my setup, I'm looking at the camera, but there's two mirrors that's right in front of me and I'm seeing a reflection of myself. I'm about to run through one. I feel like I'm running through one of these mirrors, but that ain't wise. Up, uh, up, uh, um, uh, um. Uh. Mm -hmm. So we're defeated because we've been derelict and dysfunctional in our decision making. And so to that end, my brother and sister, I want to speak to your mind right now. Oh, one thing I love about yeah. one thing that's a blessing and a burden as a posture. One thing that's a blessing and burden of a pastor, or me particularly as a pastor of this ministry, it's a blessing that I'm able to feel the tension that is on your life. You, you don't understand, but there is a burden that often comes into my heart for the people that God has called me to pastor. 
that when you are hurting, God lets me feel some of that hurt because I'm indebted to you. And it's equally as painful that as I'm indebted to you, that you don't latch yourself on to the vision of God and with me to do the work of God. And sometimes the imbalance becomes so painful that I have to remain prayerful because I submit to God for your life, but you don't commit to God to help grow that which you're connected to and it becomes painful. So it's a blessing and a burden. And so as I press forward and I hear, I hope that you hear the pain, but also the blessing in my voice that I'm not asking you to do this because this is something I need to do. This is something I'm called to do because my brothers and sisters, the efficiency that God has blessed me with intellectually and the, the ambition that God blessed me, I can stop it today and move on. But God said it is not so because I've called you to a generation of people to empower, but I need for you to work with me, church. I need you to work with me from this day forward. If it's going to be 50 of us to do it, let's do it. If it's going to be 100, let's do it. If it's going to be 15, but I believe by the end of the season of team building that God is going to touch us in a way. That's going to tear some stuff up. I'm talking about shaking some of the murder rates down in this city. I'm talking about decreasing some of the homelessness. I'm talking about challenging some of the sisters. I'm talking about fighting in the spirit that God will start healing people from terminal illness. Fighting in the spirit that God will start bringing people mindsets back. Mm. Oh, shut up. Oh. The core. Be caution on the decisions. That you're making finally. We got the core. Here's the caution. We got the caution. But here's what else we need to realize in this idea of time. The consequence. The core. Make the most of time. That's the meat. One slice of bread says, be wise in your decision making on how you live. Here's the bottom of the sandwich. The, the last piece of bread. The consequence. The core suggests that I need to make the most of my time. A slice of bread says I need to be cautious. But here's the, con here, here's the third piece, the consequence. Here's the consequence that the, that the, oh, Lord help me through this one. Here, here's the consequence that the writer files. The writer says, get me off that time clock. The writer says, because the days are evil. Ephesians 5, 16. Because the days, the days are evil. Here's the consequence that when I don't make the most of my time, and that when I don't caution myself to make wise decisions, I succumb to the evil within the days. Isn't it amazing how this 21st century text speaks of something that is so conspicuous, so within us today, that even in the first century, the days was evil. But they're still evil 20 centuries later. The consequence of kingdom time abandonment is that we allow evil to win when we engage in it. And I'm decreeing and declaring and asking you not to let evil win. Too many people are dying without knowing Jesus. Too many people are in spaces that are not conducive for progression. Too many of you are not what you need to be 
And I would submit because we did not carefully handle our time with God and service to the ministry that evil has been winning. But today, and I mean today, there's a new winner. A new winner that's coming. And that winner is your committed time with God. Pray with me now.